Hi there, I'm Sage. I found the ancestors who fought for independence and ancestors who were here long before the war. I love learning about them and sharing what I learned with you. We're too young to talk about forever. Talk about the weather to know any better. I just want to laugh until I can't breathe. Midnight moonlight dancing, never get enough sleep. Welcome to another episode of Colonial Casting. Today, I'm gonna to show you something that smells really good and is very pretty. Potpourri. Potpourri is a fragrant mixture of dried and fresh herbs and flowers, and it was very popular in the 16 and 1700s. Potpourri originated in Paris, and I think of city of love, beauty, and lights. But back then, it was nicknamed the city of mud. It was known for its pollution, crowded buildings, tanneries, hospitals, cemeteries. Well, you get the idea. Bottom line is it was gross and a lot of people got sick. A lot of people. And so the wealthy started putting things in their home like scented oils, fresh herbs and flowers, and potpourri to mask the nasty air. Mask the nasty air, mask the nasty air, mask the nasty air. What's ironic is that potpourri literally means the pot that rocks. But enough gross, let's get to the fun and pretty. What you'll need is a variety of fresh and dried herbs. With me, I have sage and rosemary, lavender, lily, clove, status, green balls, rosebuds, lemon and orange, jasmine, wolfberry, rose petal, eucalyptus, white dandelion. You'll also need something to cover your workspace for easy cleanup and, of course, your bowl or vessel. Step one, prepare your workspace. I like to lay everything out in front of me all neat and organized so I can see what I'm working with. And of course, I put my towel down to make the easy cleanup and your bowl to put your potpourri in. Or if you have a potpourri vessel, even better. Step two, add pinches of each flower and herb as you wish. Um, but make sure to smell them first before you add them in because some smells are stronger than others. I think I'm going to use a fair bit of lavender because it smells so good and it was a favorite in colonial times. I'm using a lot because I love it. And I think do some lemons. So my lemons are kind of running out of smell. So if your flowers or herbs or lemons do that, just kind of wiggle them around. This loosens up everything and it, it gets the smell better. <sighs> Smells much better. Now let's see, what goes well with lavender and lemon? Hmm. Oh, I know, jasmine. It's a nice, pretty color in there. Let's get some more of that in here. One more. Step three. When your bowl is about half full, you want to go ahead and mix it with your hands or with a wooden spoon. I like to use my hands because sometimes the wooden spoon can smush up against the sides and ruin the flowers. Because they are dried and so you want to be careful because they will smush very easily. Step four. Add a couple of accent flowers to add a pop color. So I'm gonna add some roses to get that pretty pop of color. Get a little bit more in there. You can also add pine cones or other little tidbits that looks good with 
your papri. I'm going to add one little curly cue right in the center. That's it. Now you can put your potpourri anywhere you like. I think I'm going to put this one in my sister's bathroom. It could use it. Don't tell her I said that. <laughs> if it starts to kind of dry up and you can't really smell it anymore, you can always mix it around with your hands or you can put a little essential oil in it like I do with this one, this beautiful thing that I made for my mom. Or another trick you can do is heat it up slightly. You want to put it on a medium low heat. You don't want all your hard work to blow away. Oh, dear, 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 dear. One thing to know about the hair dryer is that you know if it's working, if the color starts to come back along with the fragrance. Um, with the eucalyptus, you can see how it's very dusty. The color will become more green and vibrant along with the smell. There's a ton to learn about colonial herbs as they were very important in that time period. But I'll delve more into that in some of my other episodes. If you need help finding anything that we use in our crafts, you can always check out my Colonial Crafting Amazon shop and the links are below. Make sure to stay up to date on all of our episodes here on YouTube or on our blog. Thanks for watching. See you next time. Bye. Oh, now.